Hi, good morning. I'm making something for you today that if ever I could call my signature dish, it would be this. It's my Rotolo with marinara sauce. I've been making it for who knows how long, as long as I can remember in my adult life. It uh, basically is a, a rolled up pasta dish with a prosciutto, ricotta, spinach, parmesan filling. But first, I want to show you the pasta and there's something a little bit different I do with this pasta and I'll explain that as I go along. And then uh, we'll cut away momentarily for me to show you another video that I did recently of how I make my marinara sauce. Then we'll come back and finish with making the entire dish. All right, I have here two cups of all-purpose flour. Now, once in a while, I might take out a quarter of a cup of the flour and add a quarter of a cup of semolina, but I find that for this particular dish, the semolina makes it a little bit tougher than I really like. So, what I do differently with this, I have the two cups of flour. I add, and this is something you don't see very often, a teaspoon of baking powder and I will be mixing that in thoroughly, and also uh, a teaspoon of salt. The salt is standard. And get this mixed together. The baking powder won't make it rise and won't make it bubbly like I know you're thinking, but it does make it a little bit more tender, which is a little bit of a surprise. That'll get mixed more as we go along. Now I'm going to make a, a well in the middle, and you've seen this done before. A well in the middle for the eggs. Three eggs. Actually two eggs. I don't know why I put three out here. Sometimes I make a larger batch, but it's really only two eggs. And you stir those about, incorporating them into the flour. This may take about three, five minutes. As I go along and get closer to the end, I have a little bit of milk and that's just going to be what you need. You're going to have to feel your way through how much moisture you might need to make the final pasta. I have to get my fingers in here. There's no other way. Now when this pulls together as a pasta dough that you'll recognize you can do one of two things. You can continue to knead this by hand, folding over and pressing. This needs more liquid. Or you can transfer it to a stand mixer, <coughs> excuse me, and do it that way. I usually do finish this off with a mixer. I think. Today, though, I'll do this by hand. So you can see the most basic way of doing it. And you'd knead this until, and I'll show you, what you want is it to just begin to start to look like it's beginning to blister, I think we would call it. And then if you press with your finger, it springs back fairly quickly one or two more turns and this will be ready. I will then wrap it in plastic wrap and leave it on the counter to rest for about 30 minutes and then we'll be ready to roll it out. In the meantime, let's go to that video I was telling you about to show you the marinara sauce that I make. Hey, hi. 
Today I'm making my basic marinara sauce. Actually, it's not my recipe, it's my mother's, and she never worked from a recipe. What I did one day was to follow her around, talk to her, and write down what she did. This sauce I use for um, doing pizza, also uh, making my signature dish, rotolo, and let's say if I'm going to do a spaghetti, then I might add meat to it or meatballs and make a bolognese sauce and change out some of the ingredients. But today, this is the basic marinara sauce, my all-around sauce that can be frozen and used for a lot of different things. I've got a hot pan here already, a little olive oil, a small onion finely chopped, I'll put the ingredient amounts on the screen for you and we'll get this simmering. It doesn't need to be at real high heat. Maybe just a little bit more olive oil. I like to use a lot, but enough. I'll simmer the onions, sweat the onions until uh, over oh, a minute or two, and then I will add the garlic. If you add the garlic too soon, it could burn. And when it burns, it gets bitter. Once the onions get to where they're turning translucent, that's the point where you would add the garlic and move on to the other ingredients. That looks about right. In goes the garlic. And cook for another couple of minutes. Not even that long. Next comes about two tablespoons of tomato paste. Now this is a huge can of tomato paste. What's left over I'll put into a plastic container and into the refrigerator. It'll last for a couple of weeks in the refrigerator that way. But a certain amount of tomato paste which we can stir around in here. It will dissolve more when I put the tomatoes in here. Right now, I'll just smush it around a little bit. And uh, this is an optional ingredient, anchovy paste. I don't use very much of this, and I don't use it all the time, but a very small amount does add a dimension to the dish that I really like. So we'll get that in there. You don't have to use that if you don't want to. Now I'll turn this down for just a minute. The next ingredient is a 28 ounce can of whole peeled tomatoes but I need to break those up a little bit. And this can be kind of messy. They squirt if you squeeze them with your hands. And uh, I do that sometimes, but carefully. I've got to get in here and break them apart because they're like little balloons full of tomato juice. And poke them and break them with a fork. Each one And then I have a little chopper tool that uh, breaks it up a little bit more. The rest of it will come apart as you're cooking the sauce. I like this old-fashioned tool. I got it at an antique store. I've had one of these. Uh, this is the second one I've gone through. So in an entire lifetime, that's not bad. They're very hard to find these days at least in good condition. 
I know it sounds kind of squeaky and clunky, but it does the trick and I like the way it chops. Okay, this goes into the pan. Turn the heat up just a little now. And stir this around. This, you know, the entire time you're cooking this is going to be 15 to 20 minutes just on a, a light simmer. As I said, it's very simple, very basic, very clean and fresh tasting. I have some Italian seasoning, some oregano. I like a little extra oregano. Black pepper. A little salt. That's going to be to taste. these ingredients worked in. Now it can depend on your tomato and the time of year. Canned tomatoes sometimes uh, taste a little different from maker to maker and also uh, maybe some other reasons but sometimes they can be a little acidy and a little bitter. Then uh, it's nice to add, and I usually do this, a pinch of uh, sugar. Now this is turbinado sugar. I love that sugar. But you can use plain sugar. That just takes a little bit of the edge off the acid. You're not going to taste it in the dish. It's, it's not going to be sweet. And we'll let this simmer for about another 15 minutes or so. I'll be back. Okay, we're done. Let's see what this tastes like, if it needs anything. That's just right. Fresh and clean tasting, not heavy. And like I say, you can go from here to uh, change up the sauce if you're making different things. But this is the basic sauce. I use this, as I mentioned, for my Rotolo, uh, for pizza, and uh, for other dishes that don't need a heavy, meaty sauce. Let's take a closer look at it. All right, we're ready to go again. You watched the video of how to make the marinara sauce, and my pasta is still resting a little bit. I'm going to show you how to make the first part of the filling for this. Now, I have some spinach here. This was frozen spinach, thawed, drained, and then, as you can see, I squeezed out as much of the excess liquid as I could to make it as dry as I could get it, so there won't be too runny in the, in the filling. Put that into a stainless steel bowl. I have a couple of Parmesan cheese, and I'll have all of the exact measurements on the screen. This looks a little bit like the cheap stuff because it's so finely ground, but uh, it isn't. This is uh, Argentinian Parmesan cheese and a very nice one. A cup of ricotta cheese goes in here. Uh, anywhere from a third to a half a cup of uh, sweet red peppers, the kind that come in a jar, roasted red peppers. I chop them up uh, pretty much so they look like little pimentos. And that goes in here. They really add some good taste. Uh, Kalamata olives, anywhere from a quarter of a cup to, I like to go as much as a half a cup, but this is all I had today. 
You could add sauteed mushrooms or any other of an ingredient that you might like. Even green pepper might be nice, but these are my favorite ingredients. A little salt, some pepper. Oh, an egg. This is where that third egg was to go. One egg. little bit of uh, nutmeg. wonder how much nutmeg goes in there. Okay, not for that egg. Check that. It's more than I thought. A teaspoon of nutmeg. This all gets mixed thoroughly and set aside until uh, we get the pasta rolled out. The pasta dough has rested. The first stage of the filling has been made. The marinara sauce is done. And now we'll get this rolled out to about a 17, 18 inch round. See, now that it's rested, it becomes more gently pliable and doesn't spring back like it did when uh, we were first kneading it. That's an important step. This takes a few minutes too because it still takes some pressure and some effort to work the dough into submission so that it does roll all the way out and stays at the dimensions that you want. This might take five or ten minutes too. We'll come back in a few minutes as I work this. I'm still rolling this. You know, something to make note of, this is one of those company dishes that you can either spend all day working on and have uh, the dinner that evening or do virtually everything the day before and then f do the finishing steps, the, the roasting, the baking part, when, right before you serve it to company. And you can even make it ahead and fr freeze the rotolo. I'll show you that in just a little bit at what stage you can make it to, cut it, get them ready, and freeze them, and then uh, thaw them out a couple of hours ahead of time and finish off in the oven. So there's more than one way you can do this so that it isn't quite so much work on the day you serve it to your company. Otherwise, if it's a nice, cozy winter day, and you're snowbound and indoors. Spend the morning getting prepared and getting everything ready in the afternoon, rolling out your pasta and getting everything ready into the oven. It's a fun afternoon. We're almost to the size that I want this. As you can see, I have on the stove, that's one of those oblong uh, roasting pans. It's just about the right size for the next step when we make this roll and, uh, and boil it for 20-25 minutes. Now you could use a fish poaching pan, that would be ideal, but I don't have one of those. So again, it's a turkey roaster that's about this size. It will be exactly the right size for making this rotolo. I have the water in the pan just beginning to heat. By the time I'm done with this, it should be hot enough to make our roll. All right. Now, when we start this stage of the filling, I've got prosciutto. About a third of a pound of prosciutto. This stuff is so good. Very thinly sliced. Layer that 
all over. That should be fine. Then I'll dab on the ricotta filling and spread it out. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is roll this up. Take this edge in and roll. As you can see what I'm doing, rolling it up. Yes, I need a little bit of water to moisten this edge of the pasta. It's dry with flour, and I want to moisten it because as I roll this up, it's going to uh, become sticky and stick to itself so that this roll seals and stays together. I have some cheesecloth. You could use a freshly cleaned kitchen towel for this, but uh, cheesecloth is my favorite. This came in a package, they called it three yards, and what I did was fold it over onto itself, as you can see, in thirds. Now we'll roll this up, transfer it onto the cheesecloth, center it, and bring that around and roll it up. Not too tight, but tight enough. It will swell a little bit as we're boiling. I cut two pieces of string and tie these ends as we want this to hold together. It's going to be in the water simmering for about 25 minutes. All right. I'm going to transfer this over here for a few minutes and we'll wait until that water is hot enough and I'll be back to uh, show you how we finish this off. All right, now I think we're ready to do this. We've got our water boiling. I've got a rack in here with two side handles, which will help us later on when I want to remove the roll from the boiling water. Now this goes in. As you can see, this fits this pan. If your roll comes out just a little bit larger, you can gentle that in to fit the pan. And do it that way. So this goes down into the boiling water. We will let this go for anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. I usually do it about 25 minutes and then we'll remove it and I'll show you what to do next in a short while. We're not ready to take this out yet, but there are two things that I wanted to tell you. Uh, I use, this is a two burners, I've got this across over two burners, and then there's a third heating section on this stove. But you could also use a large, the larger burner on your stove if you don't have the, the triple or the dual. The other thing is, once this gets to a full rolling boil, you can turn the temperature down by about half or maybe even a little bit more until it's just above a simmer for the balance of the cooking time. Okay, let's get this out of the simmering water and let it begin to cool down. Now, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see me do this, but here this comes out of the water. I'll put it over here onto the counter and it will cool for 20 minutes to a half an hour until I can handle it. And then I'll show you how to finish this off. All right, now we're ready to finish this off. It's a breeze from here on out. 
I will, this has set for about 30 minutes. I can handle it nicely. It, uh, I need to snip the strings that tied this together. And unroll it from the cheesecloth. And it's still actually just a little pliable, so if it's a little out of round, you can shape that back pretty easy. So let's see which knife will be best. I'm going to cut it in half first. You need a pretty sharp knife. Look at that. That is beautiful. And about one inch slices will be about right. Let's see. All right. So this is the tomato sauce that I made for you the other day. And I'm pouring that in the bottom of a nine by 13 pan and I will put these in, nestle them down into the sauce so that all will fit. Three across Try to get them in here so that I can get three across and four down. Then at this point, now you can make this ahead, like I said, and freeze this at this point or simply cover it with foil, put it in the refrigerator for, I make it a day ahead for 24 hours and then bring it out and serve it, get it ready to go into the oven and then serve it.